Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing great and welcome back to the fourth and the final day of the ACCA's practice to pass webinars. And this is the fourth and the final day. And this is going to be one of the most critical and I believe a sensitive day because today of that matter tonight we are going to cover many many topics rather than focusing on one single topic so tonight we are going to explore the topics which are classified as the minor topics minor topics are normally not well prepared by the failure students students who tend to fail this exam are never absolutely prepared with respect to these minor topics but wait a second why are we discussing the fa failure students because you are not going to be one of them and definitely with the you know with the with all your hard work and your dedication and if you are going to follow my instructions i truly believe on that that 5th september monday 5th september 2022 will be a winning day for both of us okay if anyone out there who wants to you know jump into the whatsapp group for the september 2022 first of all you will get the link uh, within your you know chat section or question and answer section you will get the link for the whatsapp group but still if you are unable to join it you can contact me on my personal number uh, which is available on whatsapp and then i can share the whatsapp link with you no worries no problem so this is the storyline and where were we now we all know now we all know that overall seven areas makes up this double a syllabus the first three areas were major areas which we covered on the day one day two and the day three of the webinars day one was all about risk Day two was all about internal control systems and day three was all about substantive procedures. So if anyone out there who has just joined us and who has got nothing to do with day one, two and three, he or she missed out the day one, two and three. The first good news is that the link of the recorded day one, day two and day three is now available in your WhatsApp group. Secondly, and most importantly, day four, has got nothing to do with day one, two, or three. So it's a brand new story, brand new day, great energy. In fact, more energy and more power to you. And let's make this day a very, very productive day because we all know that the minor areas are four minor areas. Let's try to explore all four. And we all know that out of 100 marks, bare minimum 30 and approximately up to 40 marks will be you know will be around the minor areas so it's very very important some would say equally important i might say it's more than the important it's more important as compared to any particular one major area so all the minor areas are more important as compared to audit risk all the minor areas are more important to the internal control systems so this is why i believe we need to invest a complete fourth day on the minor areas okay now what about exam format first of all you have to understand within your section a more than 50 percent marks approximately 20 marks out of the 30 marks will be from the minor areas what about section b well out of 70 marks approximately 20 marks out of the 70 marks will be on minor topics so that makes overall approximately 40 marks you know on the minor areas so you cannot ignore the today's session the pass rates are so pathetic because nobody seems to prepare the otqs nobody seems to give due respect to the minor topics and everybody seems to be focused on risk controls procedures that's it but you should not be doing it you need to invest quality time on the otqs on a daily basis and you need to invest quality time on minor topics maybe three four days would do the job i hope you are attempting everything on the acca's practice platform i hope you are solving three otqs in the morning three otqs in the evening i hope you are not ignoring the bookish knowledge based questions when you are attempting a full pass paper question don't ignore them give them due time and due, due respect 
i hope you are absolutely clear once you have you know attended the first three days of the webinar because the first three days of the webinars were allocated to the three major areas i hope you are not going to ignore the minor areas and that is why you are here today and you will listen to my instructions and you will solve the questions last but surely not the least you need to attempt the mock exam at least three of them and you need to make sure at least one of your mock exam should be marked by an expert tutor it's mandatory this is absolutely sure thing so according to the plan we are here on day four and we need to start with ethics we need to explore corporate governance we will go into internal audit and we'll try to finish off with the audit report okay So let's start the first minor topic, which is called ethics. Now the first minor topic, which is called ethics. And I need to be, you know, a little quick if we need to cover everything. So I need to speed up. Now, according to the ACCA, there is a conceptual framework which the students needs to understand. Now that conceptual framework has got three things in it. Number one, the fundamental principles, which we should not make any compromise on, on it. Number second, the threats which could affect the fundamental principles. Last but surely not the least, there are safeguards which would avoid or which would mini mitigate the impact of the threat. So there are three things which we need to understand. Let's start with the first one, the fundamental principles. Now there are five fundamental principles. The first one is called integrity, which means we have to remain straightforward and honest in all professional relationship. Confidentiality. We need to respect the information which we are going to obtain because of the nature of the job. Objectivity. We should remain unbiased. We should not be in favor of the client. We should not be against the client. Professional behavior. We should comply with all the relevant laws and regulations. Professional competence and due care. We need to make sure if we are performing a particular job, we should be competent enough to handle it. And we need to work with due care, with due diligence. Negligence is not allowed. So these are the five fundamental principles. So we need to understand three things. Number one, fundamental principles. We are pretty much done with it. Now we need to go to the threats. Now the threats could be just like the fundamental principles I C O double P or you could say I cop square. The threats are a double S I F. The first thread is called advocacy threat. You cannot promote your client. You cannot defend your client. If you're going to promote the client, you will be considered as advocating the client. If you're going to defend the client, you will be seen as taking the sides of the client. So you cannot be the promoter or the defender. This is what we call advocacy threat. You should avoid any financial or non financial interest. We call it self interest because of the self interest. Your behavior, your judgment will be inappropriately influenced. So it's not allowed. You cannot perform audit of a particular item or a subject matter which you initially prepared. So self review threat is a situation where the audit firm will be involved in auditing something which they originally, you know, prepared it so for example if i have revalued your non-current assets and then i am if i'm going to perform your audit i will be auditing the work which i already performed or i executed it it's called the self-review threat why self-review threat is, is important because the auditor will be unlikely to admit the errors or they will they might they might not be you know they might not be able to identify the errors at all number fourth intimidation threat so this could be an actual or a perceived pressure from the client. They might try to influence the auditor, you know, undue influence. They might try to exercise undue pressure. So this is what we call intimidation threat. Last but surely not the least, familiarity threat. Familiarity threat means when the auditor becomes too sympathetic or too trusting of a client, you know, because of the family relationship or any other reason, we call it familiarity threat okay so here, here are a few examples from advocacy threat self-interest threat 
self review thread intimidation thread so let let me quickly skim few of them for you for example if i am financially dependent on one particular audit client this is what we call fee dependency and this is a supreme example of self interest thread so the rule says the accs says if you are getting you know 15% or or more audit fee from one particular client that is a listed company for back to back two years for consecutive two years we consider it we consider that situation as if we are financially dependent on that client and we call it self interest thread obviously we cannot accept gifts and hospitalities from the client we should not have any financial interest in the company such as we should not hold any shares if any member of the audit team has shares we should remove that particular member from the audit team or or that individual can dispose of the shares and he or she can continue with the audit engagement team but just imagine if the shares are owned by the partner of the firm so we cannot say okay fine let's remove this partner get someone new no if the partner holds the share by simply removing that partner from that engagement team will not work you need to dispose of the shares otherwise you cannot execute that particular client and similarly what's contingent fee if your audit fee is dependent upon a financial outcome of the client we call that situation contingent fee contingent fee is strictly banned it's not allowed example if my audit fee is 20% of the client's net profit and let's say client's net profit is 100000 that means my audit fee would be $20000 okay at the end of the audit i might realize that the client has not charged a particular impairment expense which they should have charged let's say the amount is $50000 will, will i be you know sh sh should i will uh, should i be willing to you know make the client realize that they need to write off 50000 more as an impairment expense not really because if i'm going to do it their net profit will fall from 100000 to 50000 and as a result of that my audit fee will fall from 20000 to $10000 so that is why the audit fee dependent on the client's financial outcome is not allowed and it's called contingent fee which is strictly banned you cannot provide accounting bookkeeping internal audit or any kind of services to your listed audit client because that would create self review threat intimidation threat if a client if 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 your client knows you are financially dependent on them they will try to abuse the situation if the client is offering you gifts and hospitality so you know they will expect some favor from you in return so this could lead to intimidation threat family and personal relationships could come in between your professional work and they could create you know unusual pressure for you and this could be an example of intimidation threat as well so long association of senior personnel family and personal relationship all those creates familiarity threat so this is it oh uh, well another topic within that ethics chapter is called conflict of interest which we discussed on the day one of the webinar in the question called heart so you are supposed to do it on your own well we are not going to accept or continue with any xyz audit client we are going to perform a mechanism called client screening and client screening has got few ingredients in it such as triple p triple r i double mf now what's that i will seek the professional clearance from the outgoing auditor that is some kind of an noc no objection certificate i will make sure i have got the competence to do the job i will evaluate pre conditions for an audit now pre conditions were discussed i think on the day one of the webinar i need to make sure do i have the resources can i handle the risk if the client's reputation is not great i might not accept the client i need to evaluate my ethical issues such as independence and objectivity I need to evaluate the integrity of the management if it's not that great I should avoid them I need to make sure I know about the source of income the nationality you know the in and out of the client we call it client due diligence money laundering what if they are involved in terrorism or anything illegal so I need to know who they are and what they actually do similarly I need to make sure that this whole assignment should be should be a profitable one so we need to discuss the fee before we accept a client uh well 
preconditions for an audit. These are there are three preconditions for an audit, and even this was discussed probably on day one or day two of the webinar. So this is it. I am done with the topic called ethics. Now I need to move to the exam requirement. So first of all, what kind of exam requirement we should expect from this topic? My dear students, first of all, you need to understand ethics is a minor topic. And if I'm saying it's a minor topic, it is a hot topic for your section A. But having said that, I'm not saying that it is not going to be tested in section B. Well, in the section B, ethics could be tested in the form of knowledge based, such as preconditions, such as triple P, triple R, I double M, F, such as you might need to define or, you know, explain I cop square, that is the five fundamental principles. Maybe you need to define with example the five threads. So all those things are extremely important for your straightforward bookish knowledge based questions. Even the engagement letter is an important topic for your minor for your straightforward bookish knowledge within the section B. But can we expect this ethics topic as a scenario based question? Yes, we can expect that minimum six, maximum 10 marks, not more than 10. What would the what would be the exam requirement? The exam requirement would be identify and explain three or four maximum five ethical threats. So you need to identify the threads and you have to explain them. You can identify by copying it from the question, but you have to come up with explanation. And now parallel to that in the tabular form for each thread, you have to suggest a safeguard. What do I mean by safeguard? Safeguard is an action which will reduce the risk, which will reduce the risk to an acceptable level. What's the marking scheme? Well, the identification of ethical thread will give you half mark. The explanation of ethical thread will give you another half mark and the safeguard will give you one mark. To earn a full mark of each thread, you must explain. So by oh, if you're going to identify the ethical th thread from the question, it's not enough. You have to explain it. How are you going to explain it? You must explain how the auditors objectivity or independence could be compromised because of this situation how the auditors behavior could be adversely affected because of this situation how the auditor could become biased because of this situation so you must explain the ethical threats okay now if somebody out there who's wondering or who's who believes that he or she is you know relatively prepared for the topic called ethics now you need to practice a question on this topic called ethics and for the sake of practice i would recommend three questions number one which i'm about to do which i'm about to you know go through with you it's called orange financials and it is available in your kaplan exam kit number two if somebody wants to master the topic called ethics okay note it down please once you are going to prepare this chapter from the book that is chapter number four you should prepare the test your understanding number one relevant to the ethics so that's my question number two last but surely not the least there is a third question which you can prepare and you should prepare it's called hurling and hurling is actually Hurling is actually a question on audit risk available in your Kaplan kit. But the last part of the hurling is about ethics. So you could prepare the full question called hurling, not today, not tonight. Once you have prepared the audit risk, once you have prepared the ethics, go back to the exam kit, solve the question called hurling, and hurling will give you a great confidence. Is this clear? Okay, if an auditor has got shares in an organization in their audit client, you have to understand and you have to evaluate who has the, who has got the shares. If the partner is having the shares and you want to continue with that audit client, there is only one option and that is the partner must dispose of the, those shares. 
if the partner has disposed of the shares we can continue with the client if the partner is not willing to dispose of the shares we cannot execute that audit client even if we are going to remove that partner from the assignment still we cannot execute that client but if somebody else is having shares like audit manager supervisor trainee xyz you again you have got two options you need to that individual needs to dispose of the shares and then that individual could be part of the audit team if that individual is not willing to dispose of the shares we can remove that individual from the audit team and then we can continue with this with the engagement is this clear to you laiba okay fatima is clear so as m n uh rihanna edwards i am referring to kaplan study text okay so shaista and laiba has got the same question how to identify the whether the company is a listed company or non listed well you don't have to worry about it but because the examiner would clearly state it don't worry if the examiner has not stated it at all well i don't think so they will uh, if they have not stated it at all you can assume that i uh, assuming this is a listed company this is the, this is the storyline okay shivani is saying please explain fee dependency 15% concept let's say i am an audit firm called kpmg and all of you you know hundreds of companies all of you are my you know clients all of you are my listed clients or whatever kind of clients listed clients now one of the client let's say the name of that company is called mishra limited now if i am getting an amount from mishra limited which is 16 or 17 15 18 15 or more percent of the total revenue of my total revenue so if i am getting 15 or more percentage of revenue from one particular company called mishra limited what i am supposed to do i need to remain alert i need to wake up because i am getting financially dependent on one company called mishra limited if this situation happens for consecutive two years or if it is expected that the second year's fee would be the same 15 or more this is a unique situation called that kpmg is financially de financially dependent on a company called mishra limited this is what we call fee dependency and this is considered as a self interest threat yes the audit firm can perform payroll or bookkeeping services for a non listed client but with great safeguards otherwise it's not recommended what what do i mean by great safeguards you must ensure there is no other option you must ensure there are separate teams you must ensure there are you know you need to be very very attentive okay so mishra is clear now well how long can we continue audit to a specific client there is no limit to that engagement partner needs to be rotated off after 7 years or maybe less than that if there is a familiarity threat if there is no familiarity threat whatsoever still after 7 years the engagement partner needs to be changed otherwise you can continue with the client ibrahim are you clear no you cannot perform those services for your listed client you cannot provide bookkeeping and internal audit services to your listed audit client okay now please guys hold your questions hold your questions please 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 let me answer one last question before i move on okay uh anshira sir after 7 years cooling off period of 5 years is necessary yes the cooling off period for the engagement partner is 5 years which means i as an engagement partner i need to stay away from that particular client for at least 5 years then i can rejoin or resume that client well for the key audit partner or an engagement quality control reviewer the years for the cooling off period are relatively on the lower side refer to the book guys please read the book okay uh one last question before i need to move on is from bomika 
sir please can you explain the threats associated with client moving to the audit firm and employee you know? okay now if i am working in kpmg and my audit client or our audit client is mcdonald's and if i join mcdonald's and you guys are going to come for the audit at the mcdonald's you will you will see me over there right oh hello how are you let's have coffee so we'll have this situation when the one of the audit team member joins the client this situation creates familiarity threat because all of you will be you know my ex colleagues but if one of the you know associate finance director or assistant financial controller from the mcdonald's join the kpmg and kpmg recommends that this individual should be part of the mcdonald's audit team now when that individual is going to perform the audit of mcdonald's he or she might be auditing the work he or she initially performed so that creates a threat called self review threat okay you guys need to read the book um uh, mahad do you have any mnemonic for cooling off period well just read the book 5 years for the engagement partner that's the most important one during cooling off period can audit some yeah you can do whatever you want to in that period you can be auditor of any company in that period but you can't be the you can't be involved with the same company you have to avoid one particular client because you are serving a cooling off period period okay great so for the sake of practice this is the question from your exam kit there are two parts part a and part b the part b is a straight forward bookish knowledge question which could be tested in your exam explain the five elements of an assurance engagement five elements of an assurance engagement now what are those five elements so here are the five elements of an assurance engagement whenever there is an audit assignment there are three parties involved number one the practitioner the auditor the intended users most importantly the shareholder the responsible party that is the directors there has to be an appropriate subject matter in order to execute the audit that is the financial statements there has to be a suitable criteria which is the financial reporting framework such as ifrs the auditor needs to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence and last but not the least at the end of the audit there has to be a written assurance report and we call it independent auditor's report so if you know all that you can score 5 out of 5 we are done with the part b what about part a okay part a you have to identify and explain five ethical threats and then you have to recommend safeguards so just like that within your exam there will be a table you need to add the heading ethical threat you might you can copy that heading from the question itself and then the appropriate safeguards is this clear so let's now read the question all of you have got 5 minutes to read the question on your own and let's see how many ethical threats you can identify your time starts now please do it please Yes Shivani Fatma you are absolutely right Yes Shaista sometimes an example of self interest threat could transformed into intimidation threat for example if i'm getting a lot of fee from you it's a self interest threat for me but one day or the other Shaista you could abuse the situation as well you could exploit the situation as well you could exercise undue pressure on me so that would one day or the other that could be transformed into intimidation threat as well 
if you have to choose one you need to you need to identify the initial impact which is self interest in my example anyways let's please read the question and try to identify ethical threats on your own i'm giving you solid 5 minutes please do it please okay if there is question in the exam lease solution when partner having share in organization we will select which options left the audit dispose shares if a partner is having shares in a particular audit client a potential audit client may be i think the best option is the partner should dispose of the shares so that we could continue with the audit we don't want to you know we don't want to miss out the audit so the best option is the partner should dispose of the shares yes mn advocacy thread because meeting with potential very right we will if there is a question in the lease solution lease what 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 do you mean by lease solution what does that mean lease solution is not appropriate english so i'm not getting it least appropriate maybe maybe least appropriate option so a least appropriate option yeah, or the or the most pathetic option would be to uh to to not to be involved in that client that's a pathetic option because we really want to continue with the audit yes mn self review thread minimal question fatima you are absolutely right intimidation thread well done luxury hotel is a threat what what's luxury hotel yeah they are providing you a hospitality yeah so anyone out there please read the question don't ignore it last two minutes and then So are you done? Can I have confirmation on that? Well done, well done, well done. That's great. So you are the audit manager of C company and you are planning the audit of Orange Financials who specialize in the provision of loans. a uh, company has audited orange for many years the directors are planning to list on stock exchange within the next few months and have asked if the engagement partner can attend the meeting with potential investors if the engagement partner is going to attend the meeting with potential investors he will be seen as taking the sides of the client his objectivity will be considered as compromise 
even if it is not compromised it will be perceived as compromised so it's it's not allowed it's not allowed because that would compromise the objectivity of the auditor what should be the safeguard the audit firm and the engagement partner should politely decline this request because this is not appropriate and this is not allowed okay we are done with one in addition as the finance director of orange company is likely to be quite busy with the listing he has asked if the audit firm can produce the financial statement if the financial statements would be produced by the audit firm this would create lead to a threat called self review threat the audit firm would be reluctant or might not be able to identify the misstatements within the financial statements because nobody wants to admit mistakes safeguards considering this company is planning to get their stock exchange listing so as of now they are not a listed company if it is really 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 you know if this this is a really really weird situation okay with the help of separate teams we might be able to do that but considering the company is about to you know get the stock exchange listed it is recommended that we should avoid and decline this request and this assignment too okay during the year assistant finance director of left uh, of orange company left and joined the audit firm as a partner and it has been suggested that due to his familiarity with the client he should be appointed to provide an independent partner review for the audit that would create self review threat because he might be evaluating things or the financial statements he prepared as a assistant finance director safeguard he should not be part of he should not be working as an independent partner because uh he would be you know working or the the area of work would be the same once orange company obtain its stock exchange listing it will require several assignments to be undertaken for example obtaining advice about the corporate governance best practice c company is very keen to be appointed to these assignments however orange has implied that in order to gain this work the company needs to complete the external audit quickly with minimal questions so this would be considered as an intimidation threat undue pressure undue influence the auditor would feel you know under pressure the safeguards the audit firm needs to have a discussion with the management and they need to plan the audit and they need to decide on a timeline and if they are not going to cooperate with that we will not consider continuing with this audit line the finance director has informed you that once the stock exchange listing has been completed they would like the engagement team to attend a weekend away at a luxury hotel and this would be considered as self interest threat because this kind of hospitality is uh, is a luxurious one and it's too much and this should not be allowed it it's going to be consequential it's not going to be trivial in addition he has offered a senior member of the engagement team a short term loan at a significantly reduced interest rate again a self interest the senior member of the engagement team would feel indebted and he might want to you know pay off he might not be able to raise the questions so are we done with the question are you all clear now what option do you have you need to invest approximately 1.5 hour on this question consult the solution extract your answer out of the past paper answer type the solution on the acca practice platform learn the safeguards learn the explanation of those ethical threats if you are going to face a similar question in exam all the all that hard work of 1.5 hour 2 hour will help you out moreover if you want to practice something more on ethics test your understanding one chapter number 4 if you want to prepare anything else okay the third and the final question on ethics would be hurling it's a question on audit risk but it has a flavor of ethics as well am i clear am i done with the first topic oh that's lovely tarim fatma thank you very much amen absolutely anjrag that's great that's great bilal usama and everyone okay obviously i can dear students if somebody out there feels like i am being too speedy with respect to eth this topic called ethics let me tell you all the webinars around the world by acca or any other organization they are not meant to create your concepts from the scratch it's not the it's not the you know real objective if it if if that is the objective the webinar should be around 45 days before your final exam the objective of the webinar is to just polish things polish it up you know just the finishing touches what i am trying to do or what what i am trying to do here is if somebody out there 
who is not a regular student with any uh, any learning provider who is a self study student or if somebody out there you know he or she did not have a good session and he or she has missed a lot of things so i'm trying to help those so i need to be a little speedy so this topic normally i cover it in two three lectures one hour each approximately three hours but as of now we have covered it in you know in 40 45 minutes more importantly your mics are muted as well so uh we are we are not able to have a chit chat that saves a lot of time otherwise i would love to okay naila so you don't answer my question which question naila Mahat is saying, if practically speaking, if helping the client among investors is beneficial for economy, Mahat, don't think about the economy. There are many other stakeholders who could, you know, help and boost the economy. You are an auditor. Act like one. Behave like one. What's who's the auditor? An independent party. What's audit? Independent examination of financial statement. So don't be their friends. Okay, is it okay? Give me a second, please. Okay, Naila. Uh, Naila, can you please repost your question because I believe I've missed it out. Uh, yes, Ibrahim, you can. Uh, I'll let you know on WhatsApp. <laughs> this mute thing is really bad, according to Laiba, but it is what it is. Okay uh okay guys i think we are done with the first minor topic that's great it's an achievement let's go to the second minor topic pretty quickly And the second minor topic is called corporate governance. Now, corporate governance is a mechanism through which the companies are operated and controlled. Yes, the companies are operated and controlled. So we need to come, we need to control those corporate giants. If we are not going to control them, they might abuse and they have actually abused the members of the company. They have abused the, you know, overall environment. They have abused the suppliers. They have abused the loan providers. So the aim of the corporate governance is to try and prevent the company directors, that is the agents, from abusing their power, which may adversely affect these stakeholder groups. What stakeholders? Shareholders, suppliers, customers, and most importantly, wider community and even the environment. So we need to have corporate governance in place and what corporate governance is all about. I think corporate governance is all about making sure that there are strict rules and regulations about how to run the company. We need to make sure that there is a clear division between external uh, between executive directors and non executive directors. We need to make sure that there is a clear responsibility that who's going to decide the remuneration of the directors who's going to assess the risk who's going to nominate the new directors who's going to nominate the auditor who's going to entertain the external and internal auditors so what's one of the most important topic within the corporate governance is called committees the first committee is called remuneration committee remuneration committee is going to decide the salary and remuneration committee should not have any 
executive director in it 100% of the remuneration committee should be based on should be based on non executive directors risk committee will have or might have executive director as well but mostly non executive directors and they are going to assess the risk of the company nomination committee we are going to nominate who should be the next external auditor who should be the director but ultimately the directors and the auditors are the agents of the company so the members of the company are going to hire them but nomination committee will guide them and nominate them last but surely not the least because it's the most important one audit committee an audit committee will have 100% non executive directors audit committee will make sure that they you know work as a bridge between the executive management and the external auditor they will also evaluate the work and direct the internal auditors so the audit committee is able to view the company's affairs so they are going to evaluate the company and they will work between the external uh, between the directors and the internal and external auditors at least there should be three non executive directors within an audit committee and at least one of them should have the financial expertise oh well if we have an audit committee in an audit client or in a company that will increase the public confidence they will assist the external directors and they will they will work as a bridge with the external auditor so if you are an external auditor of a company and in your audit client there is an audit committee that will be a great help for you what are the benefits of an audit committee it improves the credibility of the financial statements the financial statements would be more pure would be more trustworthy you know the the public would trust the audit opinion more if there was an audit committee so there are many many benefits of the audit committee even the burden to raise the finance or even the burden of the external auditor or even the burden to meet the listing requirements in order to list the company on a stock exchange all of them will be reduced with the help of a thing called audit committee now before i take on your questions last but surely not the least what kind of question you should expect from the corporate governance within your exam number 1 corporate governance is a very important topic for your section a number 2 audit committee benefits objectives activities could be tested risk committee nomination committee could be tested within your section b as a bookish straightforward knowledge based question last but not the least there could be one exam requirement from the corporate governance which could be scenario based and how that how how or what kind of exam requirement that would be identify and explain 2 3 4 5 6 corporate governance deficiencies and then recommend the changes necessary to overcome those deficiencies how to overcome those deficiencies so same old story you need to identify the corporate governance deficiency and then you have to explain what negative impact it could have within the company and what actions could be taken in order to you know overcome that corporate governance deficiency so if you want to have a look at the question So here is the question called Sexophone Enterprises. Let's go to the exam requirement. Describe five corporate governance deficiencies faced by the company, and then provide our recommendation, our recommendation to address each deficiency, in order to make sure the company is making compliance with the corporate governance principles. So five plus five, ten marks. now you have got 5 minutes to read this question on your own and then i'll will explain few things and then we are done with the second topic and then we'll probably we'll probably have a break mohammad mahmood if you are part of the whatsapp group there is a link available for all 3 days day 1 day 2 day 3 so you'll get it naila a senior member of the audit team has loan obligation with the client that is not performing
uh, if a senior member has got the loan from the audit client and that audit client is a is a bank for example okay fine you can get the loan provided you get it on the fair value on a you know arms length transaction on a market value but if that senior me audit team member has got the loan but on a subs subsidized rate not according to the market rate that creates self interest threat and it's not allowed naila are you clear now if you are auditing apple can you get apple's phone yes you can if you are auditing honda can you get a honda car yes you can but on the market rate okay okay that's great please read everyone out there please read this question called sexophone enterprise you need to identify five corporate governance deficiencies out of it on your own Yes, Shaista. Ideally speaking, the head of the internal audit department should report to the audit committee, not to the finance director or executive management. If it is the case, it's a corporate governance deficiency. Yes, the balance is not right. Well done, well done. Continue with it. Mahmood, you need to contact me on my WhatsApp number. And this is my number on your screen right now. Contact me on WhatsApp. I'll share the link and then you'll get everything. And check out the description of the WhatsApp group as well. Thank you. Yeah, vacancy of CEO. Yeah. Yes, remuneration. Well done. Well done. Okay. So let's quickly wrap it up. All of you have performed a wonderful job when it comes to this question. I'll give you one last advice. Yes, Mr. Bill is now the chairman, but he was the chief executive until last year. The chairman has to be an independent individual, so he should not continue with the job of chairman. And if you if he wants to, he can continue with the job of chief executive. And for the role of chairman, we need to recruit an independent individual. Well done. The board has five executive and three non executive directors. So the board is not in balance. So we need to at least get two more non executive directors in order to make sure the board is in the right balance. Explanation of this deficiency. If the non executive directors are not in line with the executive, they might not be able to constructively challenge the decisions taken by the executive directors. Mr. Bill is considering his friend. Okay, fine. Consider whatever. But he should be the relevant person, but I don't think so. He's the relevant person because he has the past experience of running a manufacturing company, whereas this is a service provider. Chief finance director is setting up the salaries. This should not be the case because if it is the case, he might set more salaries of his friends or allies and maybe less salaries to particular individual who raises concerns or challenges his decisions. Recommendation. The the salaries should be established by a thing called remuneration committee and no executive director should be part of the remuneration committee. Okay, so I'm skipping it a bit. So dear students, listen to me very carefully. If you are absolutely conceptually clear, 
with respect to sexophone enterprises and orange financials you are not even halfway done you need to type and learn these questions once you are done with orange and sexophone enterprise go to the respective chapters this corporate governance is chapter 3 of the book ethics is chapter 4 of the book both of those chap both both of these chapters have got test your understanding one each and you can prepare that test your understanding which will maximize your preparation so you need to type and you need to learn using the acca practice platform with this you know lecture you are not prepared maybe you are conceptually clear but you are not prepared in order to be prepared you need to work harder and you need to invest time two questions on ethics two questions on corporate governance one question on corporate governance and one question on ethics is right in front of you saxophone enterprise and orange financials and one question more on both of them could be the test your understanding one from the book chapter 3 one test your understanding one book chapter number 4 kaplan book are we clear how do we identify the board is in imbalance well the question says there are five executive and three non executive directors so they are not in balance they have they have they should be equal naila is saying repeat the questions well we just did that uh orange financials orange financials and sexophone enterprises from the kaplan kit and from the book test your understanding 1 chapter 3 test your understanding 1 chapter 4 is this clear tarim tarim fatma is this clear fatma zora is absolutely clear laiba is clear shaista are you clear now how do we identify the board is in balance or not okay naila tarim are you clear now yes yes that's what i'm saying the see let me help you let me tell you i could have been you know slowly but surely just like risk i could have invested 1.5 hour in ethics 1.5 hour on corporate governance tata bye bye i'll see you somewhere maybe in triple a but what i'm trying to say or what i'm trying to do over here is okay i could give you a little push in ethics a little push in corporate governance a little push in every minor topic so that you could work it in your own and you will be done with the whole syllabus rather than you know yes chaista executive directors and non executive directors should be equal apart from the chairman who is also a non executive director so effectively speaking non executive directors including the chairman should be on the higher side is this clear to everyone can we have a break for 10 minutes because now we are done with two minor topics and then after the break we'll start internal audit then we'll explore its question and then last but surely not the least we'll go to the audit report okay guys thank you very much i'll see you after 10 to 12 minutes at 6 10 pm
Okay, considering the fact that we are done with the two minor topics ethics and corporate governance. Now it's time to quickly wrap up the third minor topic, which is called internal audit before we move on to the final grand event called. Audit report. Okay, now let's skim this topic as well, which is available in your study text as well called internal audit. Now what's internal audit? First of all, you have to clear this doubt that internal audit is also and it should be an independent activity. But yes, the independence of the internal auditors are usually considered compromised because of the fact that they are normally the employees of the company. But you could counter that particular factor by simply outsourcing the internal audit function to a third party. Now, let me let me make you things clear by referring to the external auditor. The external auditor is there to independently examine the financial statements. On the other hand, internal audit is more of an objective assurance. Kind of a consulting activity and it is designed to add value to improve the organization's operations. So who needs an internal audit department? Well, if the scale and diversity of activities is on the higher side, if the complexity of the operations is on the higher side, if the number of employees are on the higher side, or if the cost versus benefit analysis suggests that we need to have internal audit department, maybe the senior management are willing to have internal audit department, maybe the current control environment is poor and we and weak and we need an internal audit department. So that's how we determine whether we need an internal audit department or not. What's the difference between external and internal audit? I think we, I've already mentioned that the external auditor is supposed to express opinion on the financial statements, whereas internal auditor is trying to evaluate and review and improve the company's internal control systems. External auditors will always report to the members of the company, whereas internal audit department would ideally report to the audit committee. The reports of the external auditor are always publicly available. Well, on the other hand, the reports of the internal auditors are never publicly available. Last but not the least, external auditor must be independent of the company. On the contrary, internal auditors may be an employee of the company, but they could be independent as well if you have outsourced the function. What activities are normally performed by internal auditors? Well, they might evaluate the company's risk assessment process. They might test the effectiveness of the internal controls as you you know observed on the day two of the webinar. Mostly internal auditors were involved in testing the internal control systems. They might perform a value for money audit such as economy effect efficiency and effectiveness. So similarly, Internal auditors might provide recommendation on the prevention and detection of fraud. So these are the activities you need to be familiar with. There are certain additional roles assigned to internal auditors on the need basis. What do I mean by need basis? If it is required, then the audit committee would assign internal auditors with such assignments. For example, a fraud investigation assignment. For example, IT system review. For example, asset verification assignment where they have to make sure that all those tangible non current assets which are recorded in the non current asset register, they actually exist. So if you were present yesterday or day before yesterday, this was a this was somewhere. I think on the day two of the webinar internal audit department was involved in a asset verification assignment and hardly 15% of assets were, you know, I think that the name of that question was probably equestrian. Mystery stopper with it. They are not going to disclose their identity that we are internal auditors and they will experience what a normal or a ordinary customer experience experiences and they will try to identify the loopholes. Internal auditor could help the external auditor. They could perform contract audits in order to verify whether the contracts made by the company are in the best interest of the company or not. What kind of internal audit function would be considered as a good one? I think which has sufficient resource again if you were present on day two of the webinar we realize if the internal audit department is under resourced this is an important control which is compromised and we considered is as a deficiency 
the internal audit department has to be well organized the reporting lines should be clear the internal audit department should be reporting to to their chief internal auditor and the chief internal auditor should be reporting to the audit committee not directly to the management internal audit department should be independent they should not be you know biased they should not be you know their independence should not be compromised there has to be the leader of the internal audit department called chief internal auditor internal auditors should never be involved in executive roles no operational responsibilities the audit committee should set the plan for the internal audit department not the management there should not be any limitation on the work of the internal auditors yes there could be limitations on the work of the internal audit such as maybe the internal auditors are the employees of the company and it's a limitation on their own because somehow they will you know they will be their independence would be compromised okay internal auditors could face a threat called familiarity threat because they are working in the same organization throughout the year okay well there is a fantastic idea which is you know ruling all over the world right now and that is you could outsource your internal audit function well there are advantages and disadvantages of outsourcing the internal audit department for example the independence of the internal audit department would improve maybe more skills would be available with that third party maybe the risk of staff turnover could be passed on to that firm yes there could be disadvantages that third party might not have the real knowledge of the client uh, well there is a possibility you might lose the control over the quality there is a possibility you might face the ethical threat if you have outsourced the internal audit department to your external audit firm obviously this is not allowed if the client is a listed company what kind of internal audit assignments could be assigned to internal auditors for example value for money assignment the three e's operational audits the audit of it systems and all that okay give me a second please So here is the kit. Here is our exam kit. There is a question called Equestrian. That's from June 2017. We did that question on day two of the webinar. If you were part of it, otherwise the recording will be available and is available in your group. Part A was a straightforward bookish knowledge based question. Part B, you had to identify five direct controls and five tests of controls. Part C, you had to identify five deficiencies and five recommendations. Part D, explain the advantages and disadvantages for the equestrian company of outsourcing the internal audit department. Will you be able to prepare this on your own? Please answer this with the help of solution. Can I trust you on that? Part D advantages and disadvantages of outsourcing the internal audit function is a straightforward knowledge requirement. Aim for an equal number of advantages and disadvantages. So if there are six marks, go for three advantages and three disadvantages. Check it out. Advantage number one, you will avoid the issue of staffing. You don't have to hire the permanent employees. You don't need to develop and design and you know the internal audit department. It's an immediate solution. Outsource it. Done. The inter third party would have a huge but you know range of skills and experience. You might be able to control the cost as well. Disadvantages. If you are going to outsource it to your ex 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 existing internal audit department. Sorry, if you're going to outsource it, what are you going to do with your existing internal audit department? You might have to make them redundant. That could be a, you know, a, that could be a cost. You might face increased cost rather than lower cost. Confidentiality could be an issue. Con call it control over the quality could be an issue once you have outsourced it. Are you clear? Will you be able to invest time and prepare it on your own? Will you be able to invest now? You are not you might be conceptually clear, but you are not prepared for it. You need to invest one hour on the equestrian party and then you are prepared for it. Is this clear? So Fatima, Anshara, Tareem, MN are clear. 
Yes, Ibrahim, you will be able to figure it out. Don't worry. Okay. Shivani is clear. Yes, three advantages, three disadvantages. Washington is clear. Fezun is clear. Sonika is clear. Absolutely fantastic. Okay. One of my most favorite question, one of the most important question is called Raspberry. Okay, guys, before considering we are heading towards this, towards the end of this session, one of the most important, one of the most important question is on risk is called Blackberry. One of the most important question on control is called Raspberry. And one of the most important substantive procedure is called gooseberry. They are from the same paper, March, June 2018. March, June 2018. March, June 2018. Use the ACCA practice platform, prepare them, type them, learn them. You will feel good about it. Okay, what about raspberry? Why I'm referring to raspberry? Okay, let's check it out. Raspberry, raspberry, raspberry. So Raspberry is one of the question which I have covered during my normal classes during the normal batch. So this question is about the payroll system. And at what is the exam requirement? So you have to identify five direct controls and obviously five tests of controls 10 marks part A. Part B five deficiencies five recommendations 10 marks 20 marks. That's great. What about part C? Compare and contrast the role of external and internal audit for five mark. Will you be able to do that? Will you be able to do that? Mahath, don't use your phone, please. Okay, compare and contrast the role of external and internal audit for five marks. Will you be able to do that considering you have prepared this topic from the book? Can I have confirmation on that? Yes, Anshara, MN, Mahat are clear and they know how to, what's the difference between external audit and internal audit. So this is your five marks, right? Use the book for the further details. Difference between external and internal audit. Okay, let's go to the part B, sorry, part D. Describe assignments the internal audit department of Raspberry company could carry out five marks. So you need to come up with five assignments. What assignments? Asset verification assignment, value for money assignment, operational audit. So the assignments are also available in your book. So are you, will you be able to solve these two questions? Will you be able to invest one hour on each of these parts? Can I have confirmation on that? For five marks, how many points or paragraphs? You just need five assignments, one sentence on each assignment. Thank you, Sonika, Mahat, Fatma. That's great. No, sir, I don't know. Need you as a marker once I'm getting it. Uh, Laiba, you need to write one sentence per assignment. That's it. Don't worry. Okay, Naila, Washington, that's great. So this is it. We are done with another topic called internal audit. And now, Dear students, as an external auditor, we can rely on the work of others. Sometimes we have to rely on the work of others. Now, there are two types of experts. 
which an external auditor would look up to number one management's expert number second auditors expert what do i mean by management's expert an employee of the company client or someone engaged by the audit client who has expertise that is used to assist in the preparation of financial statements so maybe when it comes to the preparation of financial statement the management engaged a civil engineer to you know somehow figure out the degree of completion of the building or a closing work in progress that expert because the work of that expert is relied by the management when they were preparing the financial statements so that expert is called management's expert what do i mean by auditors expert if an employee of the audit firm or someone engaged by the firm maybe a third party to provide the evidence we call that auditors expert relying on the work of an auditors expert i will not blindly rely on the work of the auditors expert first of all i will evaluate the competence of that expert i will evaluate whether that individual is competent he or she should not be biased i will agree the work which kind of work he or she is going to perform i will evaluate the work whether the work has been performed in accordance to the agreement and then i will make sure that the work of the expert is well referred to reference to the work of an expert what can 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 you rely on the work of the internal audit as an external auditor yes i could rely on the work of the internal auditor provided that the that i am confident that the internal audit function is you know well managed good enough competence they are not biased their objectivity is intact so their work is well documented and well organized and then i can rely on the work of internal audit okay if your audit client is using a service organization maybe for the payroll maybe for the receivable collection maybe for the pension maybe for bookkeeping this creates a threat called detection risk but as a company the company is allowed to outsource their activity as an auditor you need to be aware of the situation and you need to work you need you need to put an extra effort because now you have to utilize the work of that service organization as well and we call it uh, you have to you know come up with audit considerations relating to an entity using a service organization because that particular company is utilizing the work of a service organization okay there are automated tools and techniques available automated tools and techniques such as test data also known as dummy data you can apply dummy data in order to verify whether the client system is working appropriately or not whether the client system will be able to prevent or detect the misstatements or not if you are going to use test data there are two options live test data or dead test data live test data means when the system is up and running with the you know client's head office or the master files you are you, you are going to use dummy data dummy data we call it live dead test data and if the client system is not up and running it's you know it's it's not connected with the main server we and if you are going to use the dummy data we call it dead dead test data the second type of automated tool is called audit software the auditor is going to use a software to interrogate the client system the auditor is not using the dummy data rather using a complete new software that software could be a ready made software called off the shelf or it could be a you know well designed customized software called bespoke software softwares are of a great benefit because they can scrutinize large volumes of data which is not practically possible using the manual techniques softwares can perform calculations software can perform casting softwares can recalculate software can prepare the reports softwares can filter out the data into different types softwares can extract samples they can do many activities last but not the least the third and the final automated technique is called the more new modern technique which you can expect in your exam it's called data analytical tools data analytics what's big data big data refers to large data what's data analytics you are going to perform certain you know techniques in order to verify or in order to quantify if there is any unusual relationship between the data so this is what we call big data and data analytics with the help of big data and data analytics the audit firm 
would be able to identify unusual fluctuations within the data and then further testing could be performed in order to verify whether if or if there is any you know un, unusual relationship between the data so now almost the last topic which i will cover in detail is what we called audit reporting okay give me a second what is the difference in big data and audit software audit software is just a software big data means you are going to utilize the large volumes of data it's not a software it's a large volume of data and you will try to extract unusual relationships within that data okay ibrahim i'll go into the details of the audit report i can't go into the details of completion but i can i can surely go into the details of audit report what about the previous videos the link for the previous videos no smart the software cannot do everything nowadays the companies are having such a large volume of data that only data analytics could you know figure out unusual relationships within within that data okay uh, the link for the previous videos is available in the whatsapp group how are you going to join the whatsapp group the number my personal number whatsapp number is available on your screen right now you got to contact me and i will share the whatsapp group link what is the most reliable audit evidence and least reliable audit evidence well this is this is a debate from the last class and i was unable to answer this yesterday well the least reliable audit evidence is a client generated one such as written representation that's the least reliable one mahad you are again using the whatsapp okay and uh the, the most reliable audit evidence would be the most reliable audit evidence would be which will be generated with a reliable third party such as bank but the problem is sometimes a third party such as the payable might not respond at all or they might respond yes we owe a balance but they might not confirm what amount exactly so it depends otherwise if the third party is a reliable one a professional one if they are answering it so considering the auditor is reconciling the client's financial statement with the particular third party the third party evidence would become a, the most reliable one okay any other question yes over the most reliable audit evidence would be external confirmations provided the external confirmation is from a professional organization such as bank the the pay you, the your clients payable might not respond so are you getting the point okay shivani is saying you said you will tell the strategy for the next upcoming days for exam okay okay i'll 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 tell you okay liber wants to differentiate wants a differentiation between material but not pervasive and material and pervasive okay if that if i need to clarify between material and pervasive and material but not pervasive i need to go into the audit report right anshara you must relate your procedures with the situation you must be fully aware of the situation 
Okay, there is a very important question from Abu Bakr. And the answer to your question, Abu Bakr, is definitely, definitely you should start with the section A. Washington, I'm really sorry. I tried to upload the kit. I don't know what went wrong. I tried it twice yet last night. It didn't go. Well, I'll, I'll send the latest kit right after this class, right after this class, because I've I've cracked the latest double A kit and you can you will be able to perform the search task as well. So I, I'll share the kit. OK, which section to start with the, with first in the exam? Definitely it has to be section A because section A is a very delicate one. It requires fresh mind and energy. You can't risk it for the you know last half an hour or 40 minutes. OK, what about time management? Time management, how many minutes do you have in your final exam? OK. Umar, that depends. Umar is still stuck. Which evidence is the most reliable? It depends on the situation. If it is from a bank. Obviously, it's going to be the most reliable one. But if the, your client's lawyer is suggesting some, something, no, that's not going to be the most level because the lawyer is after all getting paid from the company. So you can't 100% rely on that. So it depends. It's situational. So all of you have got 180 minutes, right? Uh, Fezun, you need to contact on the WhatsApp. Okay. Uh, if you have got 180 minutes, how are you going to divide your 180 minutes? 40 minutes for your uh mpqs 60 minutes for your first long question that gives you 100 minutes and then another 40 minutes each for your question two and three of the section b that gives you 180 minutes so 40 60 40 40 write it down 40 60 40 40 yes there is a question mark on the company's lawyer's objectivity yes as then you're right that is why I'm not 100% relying on the company's lawyer. OK, Laiba is saying that she is not that great when it comes to typing. So what if she attempts one long question and then she could have a break in the form of OTQs, then another two long questions from section B. Yeah, Laiba, if it works for you and it will only work for you on the final exam day, if you are going to apply this technique religiously, when you are going to solve three, four, five pass papers in a stretch, just like your final exam. So if somebody has got a customized strategy for himself or herself or whatever your strategy is, strategy is, you got to make sure you practice that strategy on paper. It looks promising, but you need to execute it as well. OK, any other question? OK, MN is saying, sir, I feel difficult to type as same like in the book. Uh, well, don't worry. And Mahad, Mahad is saying I'm feeling anxious about the exam. So the answer to MN and Mahad is same. Select few questions on risk. Let's say six questions on risk. Type and learn them twice. Within three days. And you are absolutely well prepared for risk. Similarly, Select six questions on controls. Type and learn those twice. Invest. Don't attempt them. Invest. Prepare them. Literally as if you are getting your final exam out of those six. When it comes to substantive procedure, don't go for six questions. Go for go an extra mile. Go for 10 questions. So six plus six, 12. 
add another 10 on substantive procedures 22 maybe one on ethics one on corporate governance one on on maybe going concern one on sub subsequent events and you are done yeah if i have to attempt the double a exam tomorrow morning i will start with section a otqs and then i will straight away attempt the substantive procedure question and then i will go to the maybe i'll go to the risk question or the control question that depends fatima sir every septem every uh fatima i didn't i didn't get your question every september the slave is slightly different yeah there if there is any change the changes across all the acc exams they are always applicable from the september and onwards for example for the september 2022 the professional marks have been raised from 4 to 20 in triple a so uh, uh, whenever there is a change it is mostly it is applicable from september and onwards sir please kindly share this handout pdf for today oh well you need to join the whatsapp group then you need to check out the whatsapp group description and you will figure out everything sir is any chapter more important to read full text well not really but audit reporting is an important chapter which should be prepared from the book extremely important otherwise chapter number four ethics and acceptance from the book is an extremely important chapter to be prepared from the book i missed otqs in pm while prioritizing section c oh, okay don't do it that's why i'm i'm when it comes to pm i always suggest start with section a then go to section b and section c and then come back to section b but obviously time with the time management you are not going to miss out anything any knowledge based question list no not really your whatsapp group is is loaded with it no ideally speaking you should not come up with definition in your own words you got to learn it any professional marks in double a no there is no professional mark in the double a sometimes the examiner would say write a covering letter in the context of an internal control question sometimes for two marks otherwise there are no professional marks in double a there are no professional marks in all in any skill exam is this clear roshan Sir, kindly share the name of four questions of both controls and audit risk. Most important questions. Okay, I will. Okay, give me a second, please. I'm I'm working on something extremely important for you. Wait, 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 wait. Give me one more minute. I'm almost almost done.
Okay. Uh, can you can you uh, is my screen available to you? Okay, Ibrahim Khan. Ibrahim Khan. I'm. Okay, this is great. Okay, so extremely important questions to be typed. You are not supposed to read them. You need to type them. And when I say type them, consult the solution. Type them as if this is going to be your final exam. Type them as if you need to prepare it. Don't just attempt it. Learn it. You know, be you know, be polite with it. Extremely important questions to be typed and learned after the September 2022 practice to pass webinar. Prepare these 30 questions before attempting mocks under strict conditions. So if I'm saying three mocks, it means there will be three mocks means nine more questions apart from these 30. Once you are done with these 30 questions, you are ready for the mock exam. Now, what's the breakdown of those 30 questions? Risk six, controls eight, substantive procedures 11. Why so much? Because A, they are quick. A, B, they have, their weightage in the final exam is on the higher side. Ethics one, corporate governance one, internal audit one, going concern one, subsequent event one. Now here's the list of the risk questions. The first three questions are with ratios. The next three questions are without ratios. Now, if you realize the question which we did are not available in this list, so you might want to, you know, you can skip one of them and you can add those questions which we did in the webinar because what we did in the webinar was I remember the name was heart, right? Heart had ratios. And what about without ratios? I think the name of that question was Esk Company. Then what about controls? Well, controls, we did a question called equestrian. Equestrian. And there was another question called what was the name of the second question? Wit taker. So you can skip few of them and you can, you know, add them up. Substantive procedure. Uh, we did a question called Sagittary. And what was the other question which we did? Apart from Sagittarius, what was the other question? Yeah, thank you very much, Anshira. It was spinach or something. So, with respect to ethics or in financials, we did today. Sex of Food Enterprise for Corporate Owners, we did today. Test your understanding one, chapter number nine for internal audit. Otherwise, we did raspberry and equestrian as well but they are also part of the for going concern test your understanding three chapter 11 for subsequent events test your understanding four chapter 11. so this is the list which this is the file which i will share with you one could make compromise you might go for four questions rather than six but you have to make sure you are doing it twice you might go for six rather than eight but you have to make sure you are going it for yeah like you are typing them twice is this clear any questions or concerns Is this clear? Any other question? Now I am left with one last topic. I will share this file in the WhatsApp group. I can't share this file over here. I will share in the WhatsApp group. Okay, now we are left with one last topic from this webinar. And that one last topic is called audit report. And because of the loaded request, I will be going into the details of that topic. I will try to be slow. I will try to be in as much detail as possible. And dear students, this lecture for the next one hour or so will help you a lot, not, in, not only in your double A, but also in your triple A. Moreover, everyone out, of, out there, almost 99% students will get an exam requirement for five mark called impact on audit report impact on audit report will be tested within the question number three substantive procedure so we need to be you know very well prepared for this topic called 
audit reporting. So, okay, let's have the final 10 minute break. It's 6.55 right now. Let's be back at 7.05. And we'll start the audit report and we'll explore the past paper questions relevant to the impact on audit report as well. So I'll see you after 10 minutes. Thank you. Bye bye. I'll see you after 10 minutes.
Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to wrap up and let's start the last topic, which is called reporting. By the way, this is not what we call reporting. The overall topic is called completion, comma, review, and reporting. So I can't go into the details of completion and review. I can't explore going concern and subsequent right now. And that is why I'm straight away jumping into the thing called audit reporting. Now, what about audit reporting? All over the world, there are two types of audit report. There is no third or fourth or fifth type of audit report. There are two types of audit report only. The first type of audit report is called unmodified audit report. And the second type of audit report is called modified audit report. Unmodified audit report cannot be further categorized or divided or classified into any other type. So there is no further types for unmodified audit report. But yes, the modified audit report has got two types. So I think we need to keep it simple and we need to start with unmodified audit report. Now, unmodified audit report, also known as a standard report, a normal report. Unmodified audit report will start with a thing called title. The title would always be independent examine, independent auditors report. Who is going to be addressee? The addressee will always be the members of the company. Number third, the auditor will express the opinion and in the number fourth section, the auditor will emphasize why or how did he or she arrived at that opinion. So basis for opinion paragraph is a support paragraph for the opinion paragraph. In the basis for opinion paragraph, the auditor would highlight the accounting or the professional standards which he or she used in order to determine the opinion. The fifth paragraph is what we call key audit matter paragraph and this paragraph is a mandatory paragraph if the client is a listed company if the client is not a listed company the auditor might or can skip this one in the key audit matter paragraph the auditor would highlight the important audit risk important audit issues and how the auditor resolved those issues other information paragraph is the number six paragraph where the auditor would highlight that the audit the auditor was not responsible for the audit of other information but the auditor has read the other information now what do i mean by other information within the annual report there is a thing called financial statements along with disclosures and yes we are going to audit it we are going to perform audit for that but chairman report operational information message from the ceo all those information contained within the annual report is what we call other information then the responsibilities of the management and those charged with governance for the preparation of financial statements and then the responsibilities for the auditors responsibilities then the responsibilities of the auditor for the audit of financial statements so that's number eight basically there is a typo error then we need to report on other local and local and regulatory requirements if there is any then the signature of the engagement partner along with the name and then the audit firm's address and the date this is it this is what we call an unmodified audit report and there are no further types of it okay what are key audit matters key audit matters are important matters which in accordance with the auditor's judgment were very important during the audit why we want to highlight those matters so that the understanding of the users of the financial statement most importantly the shareholders could be improved each key audit matter should describe why the matter was considered to be important and how the hell the audit firm addressed the issue. Key audit matters might include important risk of material misstatement and how the auditor responded to it, important judgmental areas and how the audit firm performed those judgments, important events or transactions and how the audit firm performed the audit for that. Other information 
is any other information within the annual report apart from the financial statements it could be the chairman's report it could be the operating and financial review it could be any social and environmental report is this clear to everyone unmodified report can i move on to the modified audit report now okay everyone is clear except for naila because she's unable to hear anything are you all clear yes you are so naila please rejoin i guess no mahat key audit matter is not the same as emphasis of matter and i did not discuss emphasis of matter as yet so don't confuse yourself buddy so as things stand are you clear with the unmodified audit report well remember within the unmodified audit report the auditor's opinion would always be that the financial statements are reflecting a true and fair view it's a mandatory case within the unmodified audit report which we just just finished up, finished the auditor's opinion would always be that the financial statements are reflecting our true and fair view is this clear okay let's go to the audit report type 2 which is called the opposite of unmodified audit report and it's called modified audit report okay let's start the second type of audit report which is called modified audit report now as i told you earlier there are two types of modified audit report number one modified audit report without modifying the audit opinion so the auditor would say that the financial statements are reflecting a true and fair view but but still the audit report would be a modified report modified audit report yes the report would be modified but still without modifying the audit opinion means that still the auditor would say yes the financial statements are reflecting a true and fair view no exception no if no but not nothing well how is that possible yes it is possible with respect to three possible cases modified audit report without modifying the audit opinion what are those three cases well those three cases are if an auditor is going to incorporate an additional or additional communication paragraphs within the audit report the audit report would be considered as a modified audit report without having anything to do with the opinion now what are those three additional communication paragraph the first paragraph is called murgc material uncertainty related to going concern so if you are going to incorporate a paragraph an additional paragraph within your audit report called murgc your audit report would not be a standard report it will not be an unmodified audit report rather it would be considered as modified audit report but please understand murgc has got nothing to do with the opinion still your opinion is that the financial statements are reflecting a true and fair view now what's material uncertainty related to going concern it means you want to highlight an uncertainty related to going concern and that uncertainty is well disclosed well quantified well disclosed by the client within the financial statements so considering the financial statements are reflecting a true and fair view you can't you can't complain about it you can't modify the opinion so your opinion is true and fair but you want to highlight that particular adjustment or that particular situation or that particular disclosure so you are going to use a paragraph called murgc 
Second possible additional communication paragraph is what we call emphasis of matter paragraph. So if there is any accounting adjustment or a disclosure. Which you as an auditor believes that it is important for the users to understand. You will highlight that particular thing using a paragraph called emphasis of matter paragraph. So the objective of MURGC and emphasis of matter paragraph is same just to highlight. But you need to understand MURGC is only used when there is a uncertainty related to going concern. If the thing is not relevant to going concern, if it is any other thing, you are going to use a paragraph called emphasis of matter paragraph. If the auditor wants to highlight anything, which is not currently part of the financial statement, maybe the situation of the stock market, maybe the economic condition, maybe the upcoming accounting standards, maybe maybe any parliamentarian law or something. The auditor would use a paragraph called other matter paragraph. So dear students, all these three paragraphs wants to highlight something so that the users of the financial statements would become more aware of the things. But these three paragraphs are for three different situations. If you want to highlight any uncertainty related to going concern, you are going to use MURGC. If you want to highlight anything from the financial statements apart from going concern, you are going to use emphasis of matter paragraph. If you want to highlight anything not relevant to the current financial statements, but anything important, you are going to use other matter paragraph. So this is the modified audit report without having an impact on the opinion. So that's what we called modified audit report type number one without modifying the opinion. The last case modified audit report and finally with the modified opinion. Now the auditor will not say that the financial statements are expressing a true and fair view. So this is it. Please concentrate modified audit report with modified opinion. So there are four possible types of modified opinion. Four possible types of modified opinion and when you are going to modify the opinion automatically the report will be modified four possible types. This is one. This is two, but this one and two are under the umbrella called the financial statements are not free from material misstatement. Now as an auditor you will evaluate whether the misstatement is material. Whether the misstatement is immaterial or whether the misstatement is material and pervasive. If the misstatement is not material at all, you cannot modify your opinion. So let it go. Note it somewhere and let it go. You might want to, you know, have a discussion with the management that rectify it. If, if they are not going to rectify, you cannot modify the opinion because the misstatement is not material. If the misstatement is material, but not pervasive, you will qualify your opinion. What do I mean by qualified opinion? It means except for this impairment expense, everything is correct. It's called qualified opinion except for if the misstatement is material, but not pervasive. But if the misstatement is material and pervasive, you will not you can't say apart from this apart from this apart from this apart from that. So if the, there are many many material misstatements or if the misstatement itself is a huge one and it has got a huge impact and it transforms the year end profit into loss or it renders the financial statement as completely meaningless. You will go for the material and pervasive situation called adverse opinion. So qualified opinion because of a material misstatement, but not a pervasive one. Adverse opinion because of the misstatement being both material and pervasive. Last situation. Modified audit report with the modified opinion, but now the auditor is unable to obtain the evidence at all. It's not about the material misstatement. It's about the situation or it's about the fact a very sorry situation for the auditor. The auditor is unable to gather the evidence. If that lack of evidence is immaterial, okay, let it go. If that lack of evidence is material but not pervasive, okay, go for the qualified opinion. So I don't know about this except for that everything is clear. But if the lack of evidence is both material and pervasive, you should disclaim your opinion. You are not in a position to express the opinion. Is this clear?
within the audit report the basis for opinion paragraph is a complementary paragraph after the opinion paragraph so the basis for opinion section refers to the professional standards which you have followed in order to determine or in order to conclude the opinion so if your opinion is an adverse opinion your basis for opinion would be the basis for adverse opinion if your opinion is based qualified opinion your basis for opinion would be basis for qualified opinion so it's a support paragraph all of you have got 5 minutes please understand what is right in front of you try to understand on your own example for other matter paragraph could be an upcoming accounting standard political situation what percentage is considered material and pervasive it's a matter of professional judgment the auditor will perform the judgment and will conclude so there is no particular or definite benchmark for that pizza asif is clear and it's nice to know that asnan is clear okay please read this slide so that we could move on I mean, I I didn't get your question. Yes, in order to determine the materiality, wrap is used absolutely. If there are four, five, six material misstatement, obviously as a whole, they should be considered as material and pervasive. Sir, after additional paragraph, key audit matter paragraph on six number, I didn't get it. Okay, considering the fact all of you are absolutely clear with this, let's explore the past paper questions, which 99% students will get in their final exam. So this is one of my personal favorite question called Gooseberry. the part a is about substantive procedures on research and development the part b is about substantive procedures on depreciation property plan equipment i16 the part c is about bonus and we are already done with substantive procedures on bonus we did it we did it yesterday now i want to explore the part d okay so read the requirement discuss the issue so you have to discuss the issue from the question itself and you will get one mark for that and then describe the impact on the auditor's report so you have to tell me what accounting treatment should have been adopted by the client what mistake they have already performed what is the materiality of the issue in order to make if the issue remains unresolved so if the issue remains unresolved you have to explain what impact it will have on the audit opinion and on the audit report okay maybe you are not clear with respect to this question no worries in order to understand this part d first of all you need to you need to try this part a about research and development so all of you have got 2 minutes read the background read this Two minutes. Read this, please. The numbers are important. The nature of the company's business is important. Read the first paragraph. You have got two minutes to do that. Yes, Saad Jangir, you are absolutely right. Mahat is saying, sir, if we highlighting any issue in emphasis of matter, then why we doesn't solve it? And the issue which we are highlighting using an emphasis of matter paragraph has been correctly dealt by the client in accordance with the counting standard. So I can't modify my opinion, 
but i think it's important that the users should know about it so i'm just highlighting it are you clear why i'm using emphasis on meta paragraph similarly mahat there is an issue relevant to the going concern of the company the client has appropriately disclosed it no mistake with respect to accounting standards or any other thing i just want to highlight that particular uncertainty so i will use murgc paragraph i can't modify the opinion because the client's accounting treatment is a correct one are you clear mahadev everyone fatima you need to contact me on whatsapp i'll let you know pervasive sonika is something which will be which will make the whole set of financial statements as useless as trash okay sonika wants to know any example well why not maybe there is there was an impairment expense which the client did not recognize and if the client would have recognized that impairment expense maybe the year end profit could be transformed into year end loss can we consider the term pervasive as that specific method has no link with other fine well no Ibrahim, your question is not appropriate. Okay. Amen. If, is any question on subsequent events apart from? Yes, if you want to prepare the topic called subse subsequent event, you need to work on the textual understandings of the subsequent event from the book. Within the Kaplan kit or BPP kit, you will not figure out any long question on subsequent events. So if you want to prepare questions on subsequent events and going concern you need to focus on the study text. Okay guys are you done with the first paragraph please can please say yes so that I could move on. Are you done with the first paragraph? Okay well done. Now let's read the first requirement. Describe the substantive procedures the auditor should perform to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence in relation to the research and development expenditure. Okay. Now, all of you have got another two, three minutes. Please read this story. Read this story, please, please, please.
So are you done? What kind of procedures we can apply? First of all, we need to get the breakdown of this 1.9 million. We have to cast it right. We get we need to obtain the schedule from opening balances to the amounts added. Similarly, we need to get the supporting documents in order to verify that the amounts which they have capitalized they, it does meet the capitalization criteria. We need to make sure by having a discussion with the management that on what assumptions the directors have, you know, utilize the directors have uh, figured out the useful life as three years. We might want to compare their amortization policy and the useful life with the industry average. So, uh, last but not the least, you might want to review the disclosure notes. In accordance with IS 38 intangible assets, make sure it is in line with IS 38. Okay. Now I've got serious doubts over this 1.9 million. I've got serious doubt whether everything does literally meet the capitalization criteria. I don't think so because IS 38 is very strict when it comes to this. Research cost should always be expensed out. Development cost could only be capitalized provided the criteria for the capitalization, you know, is fulfilled such as sector criteria. Now, if you are clear with respect to these procedures. Now, please read this requirement all over again. Discuss the issue and describe the impact on the audit report if this issue remains unresolved. So management is not listening to you. They are being very stubborn. Now, what's the issue? Please read the question now. During the audit, the audit team discovers that the intangible asset balance includes out of that 1.9 million. Forget about the 1.9 million now. Here is a new number includes 440,000 related to one of the nine new health and beauty products development project, which does not meet the criteria for capitalization. So we are not going to calculate the materiality with respect to. We are not going to calculate the materiality with respect to 1.9 million. We are not going. We just forget about this 1.9 million. Let's focus on what? 440,000. So that 440,000, according to the auditor, does not meet the capitalization criteria in accordance with I 38. As this project is still going on, the finance director has suggested that no adjustment is made. What do I mean by no adjustment is made? It means that finance director is not willing to write off that 440,000 from the intangible asset and charge it in the profit or loss account. It means as we speak, intangible assets are overstated by 440,000 and the profit is also overstated because it should have been expensed out. The finance director is confident that the project will meet the criteria in the next year or during the next year in 20x6. What about her opinion? Do you agree with her opinion? Is she right? If the criteria will be, you know, fulfilled with in the next year, is she right? She, she... I mean, no, anyone else? No, no, no. Yeah, her narrative that the that we should not make an adjustment because the capitalization criteria will be fulfilled in the next year is bullshit. It's not allowed according to IS 38. IS 38 says when you will be able to meet the criteria only then on you can capitalize the amount. So this 440,000 needs to be immediately charged in the profit or loss account within this year's profit or loss account. Now, how to get five out of five marks? Let me tell you how. First of all, all of you calculate the materiality of this 440,000. With respect to the company's assets, because it will be removed from the assets and calculate the materiality with respect to profit before tax as well, because it needs to be written off from the profit or loss account and that will lower down the profit before tax. Do the maths, calculate it. 440,000, you can, you can write 0.44 million divided by 37.2 million or 0.44 million divided by 6.4 million. Do the maths.
Okay, thank you very much. How to develop the answer? Okay, here it is. Part A asks for substantive procedures in relation to research and development. Think about the accounting treatment required. Think about what IS 38 says. Yeah, we all know when it comes to research and development, the criteria is very strict and we all know that the research cost needs to be expensed out. Development cost could be capitalized provided the criteria is fulfilled. So don't forget the easy marks such as recalculating the breakdown and all that. Okay. What about part D? Part D asks for audit reporting implications if the issue remains unresolved. So first of all, you should discuss what the issue. Okay. Let's highlight the important things. What is the issue? So we need to discuss what is the issue that will give us one mark. We have to explain that the client is doing something very wrong. Then we have to tell them that what adjustment is required. Sorry, whether the adjustment is material or not. So second mark could be obtained by calculating the materiality. Third mark could be obtained by expressing what correct accounting treatment should be made by the client. But considering they are not doing it, I will express my opinion and I will also express my impact on the audit report. So there are four things in front of you, but overall there are five. Let me repeat. First of all, discuss the issue. Then calculate the materiality. Then explain what the correct accounting treatment should have been. Fourth, considering they are not making it, they are not making the correct accounting treatment impact on the opinion and then last impact on the audit report. Okay, let me make it more simple for you. Wait, wait, wait. Go back to the mar marking scheme. We'll have a discussion of the issue from the question. One mark. We'll have a discussion on the calculation and conclusion of materiality, whether it is material or material and pervasive. Then I will propose the correct accounting treatment, but considering they are not going to listen to me, I will then propose what kind of opinion I will come up. So this is basically two marks. A, you will express the correct accounting treatment. Then you will express the impact on the opinion. Last, the impact on the audit report. What do I mean by impact on, on the audit report? It's about the, the basis for qualified opinion. Now let's see what the solution has to offer. One of the new health and beauty product the company has developed in the year does not meet the recognition criteria under IS 38 intangible assets for capitalization but the company has incorporated it within the intangible assets. So that's the introduction from the question one mark. This is not in line with I 38. It should have been expensed out in the profit or loss account. This amount represents 6.9% of the profit and 1.2% of the total assets. So it is material to both the profit or loss account and the statement of financial position. Management should adjust the financial statement. They should write it off, but considering they are refusing it, the auditor's opinion will be a qualified except for opinion, but not a pervasive one because this is only one adjustment. It does not mean the whole financial statements are useless. The basis for qualified opinion paragraph would be added right after the opinion paragraph and it will explain that the assets are currently overstated and the expenses are understated. Is this clear to you? Can you now prepare such questions on your own? I need confirmation on that. I am telling you that 90% of the worldwide students will be tested with such an exam requirement. It's a very, very common exam requirement. So yesterday, 
I recommended a question called Pineapple Beach Hotel. So the part A is about procedures on depreciation. The part B is about procedures on food poisoning. All of you have got two minutes to read this part C first. Sorry, part D. Read the part D. Don't get the written representation from the management. Apart from that, you need to describe the procedures which the auditor would perform in order to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence in relation to the food poisoning claim procedures on the food poisoning claim that is on proceed provision. Okay. Now read this. Take your time. Read this. So are you done with this food poisoning story? So what kind of procedures we can apply? First of all, if they have recognized a provision, I will cast it. If they have recognized a provision, I will have a discussion with the directors on what assumptions they have made it. Let's say they have if they have made it. I will review the correspondence between that party and the client in order to understand the issue. I might want to contact the lawyer and get him on board. I would like to review the board minutes of the meetings. Last but not the least, if they have disclosed it or if they have recognized a provision or if they have disclosed it as a contingent liability, I need to review the disclosure notes. So I can I have confirmation. Are you clear on the substantive procedures with respect to this food poisoning claim that is on provision? Are you clear? Please confirm. Please confirm more more MN Fatma Osama Chivani Bilal. Thank you. Well done. Okay, Fiza. All of you are clear. All of you are only clear if you if you attended and prepared the last lecture. Okay, now why I'm why I'm building up. I'm building up to something. I could have jumped straight away into it. Now check out this part E. Discuss the issue and describe the impact on the audit report again. If the issue remains unresolved, four marks. Normally there are five, but over here four marks. Now you have to read this story by yourself. And then develop the answer by yourself. It's up to you now. Read it, please. The auditor wants to get the written representation from the management. But the management is not willing to provide the written representation which the auditor is looking for. What happens now? Part E is a reporting requirement focused on an inability to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence. It's not about material misstatement now. That's that's the other way around. You are unable to get what you want. You are unable to gather the evidence. So the, because the directors are refusing. Take the usual approach to determining their implications. A have a discussion. B discuss the materiality. C check it out if it is material or pervasive. So the answer approach would be the same. Implications for the audit report. Now you can read it on yourself. The lack of a signed written representation letter means the auditor does not have the evidence what he wants. Now the opinion would be modified except for not the disclaimer of opinion because the lack of evidence is material but not pervasive. So I will go for the qualified opinion not the disclaimer and with it and the basis for 
opinion paragraph would be transformed into what? The basis for qualified opinion paragraph. So now read this paragraph. This is extremely important as the written representation letter covers many aspects such as confirming the directors have recorded all transactions and the financial statements have been pre prepared properly prepared and they have provided the auditor with all information for the audit. The refusal to sign the letter casts doubt over the management integrity and is likely to be considered material and pervasive because this is extremely an important issue and the management is you know disowing it and they are not cooperating at all. I doubt on everything what they have provided. So that is why this lack of evidence would be considered as material and pervasive. So I will go for the disclaimer of opinion. Why? Because this lack of evidence is a huge one. It's not you are not able to obtain the evidence on a purchase invoice. It's not about you are unable to, you know, gather the evidence on a particular sales order. It's about management is not willing to cooperate. They are not acknowledging their prime responsibility. So if they are not willing to sign the man written, written representation letter, this is considered as a huge thing. So this is an important, extremely important question. Are you all clear? Well, I will try to refuse a client if management is not cooperating, but if it is not possible to refuse, I will go for the disclaimer of opinion. Mahad, it is pervasive because the management is denying their fundamental responsibility of acknowledging their responsibility. That's huge. I would have gone for the qualified except for opinion if I'm unable to verify the invoice of a particular fan, a particular gadget, a particular machine. I'm unable to verify a particular sales invoice. But this is huge. Management is just owing their, their responsibility. If there is anyone out there who wants to practice more questions on the topic called impact on audit report, you have got plenty of it. Wait, wait, wait. So this is a question called. Andromeda. And the last part is again auditors report. Same story. IS 38 in tangible asset. They have same same story. Andromeda. Somebody write write the names of those questions. Andromeda. Andromeda, pineapple, gooseberry, pineapple, gooseberry, Andromeda, insects for you, dashing. A very, 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 very important question, Jasmine. So this is it. All those questions. Okay, so we are done. What about the recordings? You will find the link for the recordings from the WhatsApp group. Now, how are you going to join the WhatsApp group? This is the number. This is my personal WhatsApp number. You can contact me on that number and I will share the WhatsApp group link. Yes, pervasive means something which affects many, many things. Or on on its own, it's a huge thing. Okay, so anyone out there who's looking forward for a plan or something, 
well the plan is a simple one i guess you need to uh, how many days do we have till exam okay today is 23rd august so you need to finish off your preparation till 31st august and then on first second third fourth four days you need to solve four mocks on your practice platform obviously those mocks won't be marked by an expert tutor because it's too late if you want it to be marked by an expert tutor you need to attempt mock earlier that is maybe on 24th august okay uh, now so minus this minus 23rd august we have got four and four eight days so what about these 30 questions we have got eight days right so what you can do is that you need to solve four questions per day but twice so that's the plan one question on risk one question in controls two questions on substantive procedure that should be your plan for every day till 31st august and then the mock then the re, then the past papers on the acca practice platform this is it i will share this slide don't worry what about mtqs three mtqs at least in the morning from the bpp kit three mtqs at least in the evening from the kaplan kit there is no doubt on it is this clear any other question now yes there is a whatsapp group you can join that whatsapp group this is the number you need to contact on okay guys thank you very much it was a privilege and an honor and i tried my level best to cover every aspect of the syllabus i tried to ensure that the core exam topics the problem not the child the problem children rather risk controls and substantive procedures should be addressed at you know at an easy pace we solved couple of questions for those topics so that makes six questions two questions on risk two questions on controls two questions on substantive procedures seventh one was on ethics eighth one was on corporate governance ninth and 10th or you can call it ninth on internal audit and then finally you can say 10th question audit report so we covered a pretty handsome number of past paper questions from the recent past papers so you guys are most welcome thank you very much and thank you very much for your kind feedback i am definitely loving it and i wish you all the very best for your future you know not only the double a exam but beyond that and do join a professional firm of accountants an audit firm right after your double a exam and i hope to see you somewhere in triple a maybe considering you will have a successful day on monday 5th september 2022 so you, we don't need to have a conversation on double a anymore but do update me about your result and i'll see you somewhere in triple a the last p2p webinar for the triple a was you know conducted by me so maybe you never know when you are going to attempt triple a i'll be there so thank you very much it was lovely to have you on board as you guys participated a lot in the chat box so it was wonderful to have you the question and answers were really helpful and if i have missed out your question a i beg your pardon b you can contact me on whatsapp probably i will be answering your questions tomorrow after a sweet break so thank you rabia and thank you anshara thank you ibrahim how well ibrahim you're most welcome and thank you fatima and don't forget the student life is a very ordinary life and it will not lead to the success story you are looking forward to so join an audit firm as soon as possible do not enter the industry directly 
invest bare minimum one year in an audit firm ideally well who who hates the big four but try to go for the medium sized firm if not big four if 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 it is a big four who why not uh if you are going for the tax and double a both try to start your day with double a because it's a theoretical paper it needs relatively fresh mind and when you are a bit tired have a break and then go for tax and when it comes to double a go for the quality rather than quantity thank you very much bumika thank you so there are many 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 things which i'm i might be i might miss out medium sized firms are gold because they tend to give you more work and they tend to change you from client to client to client to client on the contrary the big firm they are they are they are, they are super duper awesome but the big firm might put you at a particular client and maybe at one particular item let's say receivable and 6 months may go on and you are still over there so medium sized firms are also not that bad okay mahad i'll see you soon thank you naila thank you everyone okay goodbye thank you so much for your wonderful feedback i'm loving it thank you working in uk accounting can i switch can i so oh i missed it oh can i switch over to audit sector why not why not okay thank you very much guys i'll see you soon bye bye best of luck stay aggressive and sleep well before your exam and go with an aggressive attitude and if there is any point any mtq any point any procedure you are not getting it move on move on you just need 50 marks to ace this exam you don't need 80 right nobody needs 80 well if you will end up at scoring 80 why not but don't target 80 don't go crazy about 80 or 70 don't go mad don't be obsessed about 70 or 80 on the exam day or when the exam is around the corner when you when you are left with couple of days only just say oh i need to make 50 mistakes and i need to make 50 correct answers i just need 50 chill you just need 50 okay guys thank you very much bye bye